be beaming, I be booming down that block. Down that block. Everywhere you go, you know they know I'm hot. What's the deal, my good people? Welcome back to the channel. Happy Wednesday. I hope you all are doing well. If this is your first time here, I want to welcome you. Pull up a seat. I hope you enjoyed the content. And before we get into this food, I want to ask that you like, comment, share, subscribe. Go ahead and tap that bell while you're at it so you're notified anytime I drop a brand new video. Go live or schedule a premiere. All right, y'all. So today we got us some loaded taco fries. It's a lot of yummy goodness on these fries, okay? Let me just bring it in so you can see it. Hopefully all those colors are vibrant and jumping off the screen. Y'all, this whole thing is plant-based. I'm super excited. There's no meat, no cheese on here, but it is bomb. I'm going to tell you that. And I'll tell you exactly what's on it after we get this first bite in, okay? Let me bring that to you. Ooh. Mm. That's so good. Put some lime on it. Mm, mm, mm. Let's see what that tastes like. Give y'all another bite. So I think y'all want some more just like I do. That's just so good. It really is. All right, y'all. So let me go ahead and tell you about the meat that I use in here. So what I did was I took some baby bella mushrooms, chopped them up real nice, added in some onions, some spinach, sauteed that in a skillet, added some taco seasoning. Mm. What I also made was like an avocado and tomato salsa or crema, whatever you want to call it. And um, put that on top. So that was kind of like gave me the creaminess of like cheese. And then I put some, put some vegetables on here. You know what I'm saying? I got some cilantro, some zucchini, tomatoes, um, green onions. Also, there's a cook with me at the end of this. If you want to see how I made these loaded, loaded taco fries. All right. This is so good. I'm trying to be generous today. Y'all be forgetting to give y'all more bites. So. As y'all can see, I got my cousin AB hat on. Cousin AB branding. I love this hat. It's a great fit. And I needed a black hat. So this is super perfect. I got a couple other things from her from her line as well. So, I mean, if you haven't had a chance to check out her website and shop with her, she's restocking. I am going to drop the link below for you to check it out. And go get yourself something. Buy yourself something for you. You know what I'm saying? For your kids, for your significant other. You know, Christmas is coming up. So, hmm. Y'all, this is so good. And I will say that I did, I put some sriracha on here too. I wanted a kick, so I did add that on here as well. But just everything is so good. The avocado and tomato, like crema. Mm. And we are resuming story time today. I realized something about myself that I'm going to tell y'all in the story time. I realized it as I was setting up for the video. But I'll point that out when I get into story time. One more bite and we're going to get into it. All right, 
So we left off. We left off on part one on me making it to the varsity basketball team. And we left off on summer league. All right. So once summer league was over, I went back to my routine. You know what I'm saying? I was at home hanging out, going out with my friends, stuff like that. And also I picked up a job. I ended up starting my first job this summer. Um, this particular summer during my junior year, I was working at Wendy's. That was my very first job, y'all. Oh, I hate working at Wendy's so much. I really did. Um, but I started doing that. And also what happened during the summer was that me and Damien, who was my boyfriend at the time, he went off to college. So you guys know I live in Southern California and he was going to school in Northern California. So he was like in the Bay Area. And even though that's long distance, okay? And regardless, though, our lives were just so different. It really was. And we ran into some hard times. We're trying to connect with each other. And, you know, he had practice and class and studying and yada, yada, yada. I had my own schedule and stuff going on. And then eventually, you know, some stuff happened where, you know, he had called me another girl's name. When I called him one day, he thought I was somebody else. And we ended up breaking up. And I'm not going into too much detail because that is also a part of a story time where it's all about him. And if you're interested in that, I will leave the link below. It's called What Happened to That Boy. So you guys can hear all about Damien. Damien was my first and last boyfriend. All right, so we ended up breaking up. And I ain't gonna lie to you. I took the breakup kind of hard, though. I did, you know what I'm saying? I remember playing One Last Cry by Brian McKnight over and over again. I would play that song over and over and over again to help myself get over it. And eventually I did, all right? So summer is coming to an end, and I was back to school, entering my 11th grade year. It's my first time being an athlete, you know what I'm saying? Like, I remember wearing, you know, you have, like, your hoodies and stuff, like, when you want a team. I remember wearing my hoodie so proud, had our team stuff across my chest. I used to wear that hoodie out, and I wore it proudly. I used to walk around campus always with my hoodie on or have on my sweats. Like, I was proud. I was proud to be on the basketball team, you know what I'm saying? And soon as there was no time off as soon as we started school we pretty much got to practice you know what i'm saying like it was time to get our stuff together as a team you know because we hadn't been together for a couple of months after you know summer league and it was time to start you know getting our offense together our defense together you know getting our chemistry together and get it as tight as possible um the head coach he wasn't no joke he wasn't a joke he was kind of around during summer, but not really. More of the assistant coaches kind of ran summer, right? So he wasn't really around during summer. So I really didn't know what I would get myself into, y'all, for real. And when I tell you he was going crazy with the drills, like he was not playing with that. Like he, he was going to get the best out of us, you know, and really make us work together as a team, which meant that when we had to do drills and sprints, and if anybody didn't do what they were supposed to do or if they stopped, we as an entire unit would have to start all over again which cut into our practice time. You know what I'm saying? So we were so busy making sure that we were, you know, tight as a team in terms of everybody, you know, doing the sprints and doing what was asked of us to be done. That sometimes it would kind of, you know, cut into our, our practice time. So we finally get through our conditioning. You know what I'm saying? We done ran around the gym. We done did this and did that. Now it's time to go ahead and, you know, start doing breakaways and start doing um, three on threes or whatever they have us doing. You know what I'm saying? And, Yo, what I realized, this is what I mentioned earlier that I realized about myself was like, yo, like these, these women are really balling, okay? This team is amazing, you know? I mean, don't get me wrong. They were good the previous year, but everybody stepped their game up. So a lot of people were going into their senior year. I'm going to say our whole, like, starting, out of the starting, starting five, uh, four of them were seniors. And... I know a lot of them were already like, you know, being recruited and looked at by colleges, but they stepped their game up. They had stepped their game up significantly over the summertime and it showed, okay? So here I am, somebody who's brand new. And again, nobody ever talked to me any kind of way or made, or made me feel any kind of way about being brand new. They were very supportive and patient and all of that. But, you know, when you see yourself and see players balling the way they was balling, like it was a lot to take in, you know what I'm saying? 
So I was really kind of in awe of them, you know, but also trying to find my place. And, um, you know, so we start practicing, we're doing this, doing that, you know, having our early morning Saturday practices. And it really felt good to be a part of a team, you know, because I had never been a part of a team before like that. So having to depend on each other, look out for each other. Um, you know, if one, if one person did want, did something wrong, all of us did it wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like he really was showing us togetherness and teamwork, you know what I'm saying? And which really helped because that really gives a level of accountability where you got to communicate with each other. You know what I'm saying? So that we don't go down in flames as a team. Like you, I got to make sure that my fellow teammate, I'm pull, make sure she pulling her weight. You know what I'm saying? And if she's falling short, I got to be willing to overcompensate a little bit, you know? So I really just learned a lot about teamwork and, and I'm really grateful for the stuff that I learned back then. So, you know, we get our stuff together, got our plays, got our offense. You know what I'm saying? We done got our basketball numbers, you know, Got our jerseys. I remember the first time I tried my jersey on, it felt good. It was all silky against my body, you know. And our colors were maroon and gold. So it was like like bomb ass colors. Um we had our team shoes, like we had our breakaways, you know what I'm saying? Like our warm-ups, like everything was on point. It really was. And I remember our first game. It was a home game, and I was nervous. I was so nervous, y'all, you know what I'm saying? But Heart was racing, you know what I'm saying? Because it's now game time. Like, people are actually paying to come and watch us play. And I don't know. You know what I'm saying? The music is playing. Uh, because we took the music serious, right? So we started making, like, mixtapes and stuff like that to be able to, you know, play what we wanted to hear to get us hype. And just running in as a team with those warm-ups on and, you know, going and doing layups and people shooting a shot and, you know, rebounding and giving and outletting and throwing the ball to each other, like... It was a great team dynamic. We were very, very much in sync as a team. And we really cared about each other. And it felt good to really do that. You know what I'm saying? So, it's our first game. Um, <laughs> get to the first quarter. I don't play. Cool. But I'm observing. Like, I'm watching a lot of everything that's going on. Because trying to simulate a game is totally different than playing in the game. So, second quarter, we about because our quarters were eight minutes long. We in the second quarter, it's probably like now down to the last two minutes, and my coach calls me to go in, and you know at the at the four. So I'm nervous. Okay, I am. I'm terrified that he's calling me. I'm thinking like, why are you calling me? You know what I'm saying? Like I'm cool being on the bench. He like he looked at me. He was like he was like Rhonda, and I was like whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, you know, I take, a, take off my, you know, I had my, no, I had everything off already. I had everything off. I was ready to go. So I go in, I wait for the ref to, you know, call me in or whatever. You know, I'm tucking in my jersey and I'm making sure I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, you know, getting my, my shoes adjusted, like to the, to the gym, the gym floor or whatever. And, um, I just remember like this outer body experience of like, yo, Rhonda, what the girl you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, it really felt like I was on a big stage, you know? And I feel like my mind went blank for a minute, you know what I'm saying? So when I got called in, somebody on the other team was shooting free throws, and I remember having to be under the basket. And I, you know, at my heart was racing. So she shot her first free throw. I go in. I stand there right under the basket is, you know, my position where I was. And she shoots a second free throw and she misses it. I box out. You know what I'm saying? I box the girl out and I get a rebound, y'all. So let me tell you something. That rebound is exactly what I needed to just give me my confidence. You know what I'm saying? Like I threw the ball, threw the outlet to the point guard, and I ran down to the end of the court, you know, to get in position for our play that we were setting up. And at that point, everything that I had been learning and observing and, and doing in practice, you know, was all starting to come together. And I was really proud of myself, okay? I was. And that two minutes that I played for the for the second quarter leading up to halftime really felt like 15 minutes, okay? And hell, maybe it was because, you know, by the time you start fouling and timeouts and all of that, it just felt like a lifetime. So I remember that game. And honestly, I probably played about, I don't know, probably three or four games before I messed around and broke my foot. So I had a situation at school, and I did talk about this before, where – the speaker fell on my foot. Broke my foot. 
I was in a, um, a walking boot. I was pretty much done for the season. That was it. And when I tell you I was heartbroken and crushed that something I wanted so bad was over, it was really hard. And a lot of it was hard, too, because you're trying to remain in good spirits. Because I was still going to practice. I was still going to the games. I was still doing whatever, you know what I'm saying? And But I was, like, struggling with feeling like I wasn't a part of the team because I wasn't contributing, you know what I'm saying? And that was really, really hard for me, you know? Um, but I'm going to tell you something. When I think about it, this is also what I realized as I was setting up was like, you know what? It happened exactly the way that it was supposed to. Our team was truly, truly dominating that season. And what I feel like is that I was injured so that I could observe a different kind of way. You know, because when you're playing, it's hard to observe certain things and or whatever. But like truly not playing and sitting on the bench I was really able to see the game a whole different way, like just really understanding the ins and outs of our plays and the timing of things and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's almost like watching game film. That's where, that's really what I benefited from. You know what I'm saying? Not that I couldn't have helped my team. I mean, because I probably would have averaged about, I don't know, I would probably say I probably would have played like eight, to eight minutes, eight to ten minutes per game maybe, something like that. And I do feel like I would have been helpful, but... I really, really feel like I was taking in and understanding the game of basketball from a different perspective, which really helped me in my senior year when I was, you know what I'm saying, when I was able to come back. But I just observed and I just watched them girls. When I tell you they was getting busy, I mean, like the pivoting, the shots, the the boxing out, the hustle, like everything that was happening, I was able to see from a different lens. And I feel like it really helped me take my game to another level when I eventually returned back playing. Um, so... I went from definitely feeling down and out the first couple of games, the first couple of practices, but then I really saw the benefit of me being able to observe the way that I was observing. You know what I mean? And people also asking me questions about how they should have done certain things or were they in their spot or whatever. Like me being able to see it, you know what I'm saying, from the sideline and tell them like, nah, you missed your spot. You should have did this or nah, that was perfect. It was still dope. Like, I was still very much a part of the team. You know what I'm saying? So, that was definitely a setback. But I then, you know, thinking about the bigger picture and the way that I would still contribute, the way I was still able to be, you know, contribute to my team and also being able to take my game to the next level mentally. You know what I'm saying? Because I definitely feel like basketball is mental. The physicality part of it is, is significant too. But I'm saying, like, really understanding the game and the mental part of it and having that mental toughness is what I was absorbing. So that was the upside to it. So that's part two of story time. And um, I kind of even been getting excited just even just like thinking about some of the stuff that was going on. So this is part two of story time. And the next part, part three, is going to come out tomorrow. It's going to be on Thursday. And I think that we kind of get into the love part of it, you know, the relationship part of it and how it kind of intertwined during my junior year. All right. So I appreciate you guys for watching. Uh, if, you, if you're interested in making these loaded taco fries, I promise you this is so good. Like you go, It's so much flavor in every single bite. So that's about to start right after this. Um, I appreciate you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. I want one thing from you. Just be good to yourself. Peace. Let's go ahead and get started with our quote-unquote meat for the loaded taco fries. These are baby bella mushrooms that I chopped up nicely. I'll also use part of a white onion and i also use some spinach. I took these ingredients and put them in a skillet using some olive oil over medium heat. I let that cook down nicely. And then what I seasoned this with was taco seasoning. Now feel free to use whatever kind of taco seasoning that you like. And I also use some all purpose seasoning. Again, season this with whatever you like. Now let's move on to the creamy avocado sauce. This is what I used in place of the cheese. So I have two whole avocados. I also used one tomato. And I want to say I used about two to three slithers of red onion. I have the juice of half of a lemon and a handful of cilantro. So I took these ingredients and put them in a blender. I topped this with some pink Himalayan salt and I also added in some all-purpose seasoning. I went ahead and gave everything a good blend. Now this is the finished product. It came out creamy just like I wanted. The taste was on point, but you can add additional seasoning or whatever you need afterwards. Now let's move on to the fries. So I cut my sweet potatoes up as evenly as possible. 
I put some olive oil on them. And let me show you what I seasoned the fries with. I used some spike, Cajun lemon pepper, smoked paprika, and onion powder. And it's not pictured, but I also added a little bit of pink Himalayan salt. So I put this on my cooking sheet. And as you can see, I have the seasoning on there. Tried to spread it around as evenly as possible because I want the flavor to taste the same in every bite. Now I have my oven set and preheated to 400 degrees. So I tossed my fries in the oven. I let them cook for about 25 minutes or so. You wanna make sure that you keep a close eye on your fries because every oven is different. These are my fries fresh out of the oven, cooked all the way through. Some of them even got crispy, just like I like. So now it's time to assemble our fries. So I have my mushroom filling or mushroom meat in there. I have my creamy avocado sauce. I top my fries with some cilantro, zucchini. I have tomatoes, all this yumminess, this goodness. And I even added some sriracha to give me a little bit of heat. But this was so easy to make, all plant-based, super healthy. And I really enjoyed it. So if you try it, I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. I be beaming, I be booming down that block. Down that block. Everywhere.